Shabbat Shalom. Welcome back to Take Time for Torah. I'm glad to welcome you back to Parshat Matot, the next to the last Torah portion of the Book of Numbers of Bamidbar. At the end of this, at the end of this Book of Numbers, as the Israelites begin their wilderness, their trek through the wilderness, they are also preparing themselves to enter into Eretz Yisrael, the land of Israel, where they will have to govern themselves. One of the pieces that becomes important are the regulations for vows and promises. When one would take a vow in, in front of God and in front of the community, it would be an unbreakable vow or promise. Once made, it needed to be carried through. So there is a lesson here that teaches us about commitment. When we make a commitment to someone or to something, we should follow it through, even if it becomes inconvenient or difficult for ourselves. You see, the world was created through word. When God said, create the heavens and the earth, the heavens and the earth were created. When God said, create the animals and the plants, the animals and the plants were created. When God said he created man, man was created. Words have substance. Words have real power once uttered. Words can hurt and words can heal. Words can uplift and words can destroy. You see, vows and promises, when we make a commitment to someone, they are taken seriously. It is as if it is a real thing for ourselves. The world, uh, we are taught in the Torah that we should keep ourselves fr uh, far from falsehoods. We should not lie, and we should uh, steer away from those who would lie or who would cheat. We are given an opportunity, though, when we make promises and vows to, to annul those vows and promises. Of course, that's Kol Nidre, Erev Yom Kippur. When we as a community stand together, we have the moment to annul our vows and commitments to each other. But in retracting our words, we also retract a bit of ourselves. When we make promises for ourselves, we impose upon ourselves something we should do. If we commit to do something, we should do everything in our power to make it happen. When we commit or promise someone that will follow through on a project or on a or on a an activity, we should do everything we can to make it work. It shouldn't be that it's just inconvenient or that we don't feel like it. Rather, we should make the commitment and follow through. As they always say, our word is our bond. When we utter something, it means that we're going to carry through upon it. A and I can't help but think about that in these last two weeks before this budget crisis, all of these elected officials have made promises to their constituencies. Absolutely, they should follow through on those promises. But at the same time, they have an opportunity to step back to say, is that promise realistic? Is that promise possible? And if it's not, then like Kol Nidre, they have an opportunity to retract themselves, to retract their words, to say, we need to do that which is best upon, best for all of our people not just for a certain constituency. So this week, I'm thinking about this idea that when we make promises, we should follow through on those promises. We shouldn't make promises that we have no intention of fulfilling, but rather following through means that our word is our bond. But there are times when we see that it's impossible to fulfill a promise, and that's why Yom Kippur is so important to us. We have this moment to pull ourselves back this week, look at the promises you have made to the people around you, to your family, to your friends, to your work, even to your synagogue, and follow through on those promises. But if you can't follow through because it's just impossible, know that there's a way to escape, a way to retract your words and to make a different statement. Shabbat Shalom. I wish you a week in which you make promises and fulfill them. I also wish you a week in which you do that which you say and say that which you do. Shabbat Shalom.